it's our powerful desire that you accept the perfection of where you stand even if you don't like it you accept that it comes by your point of attraction and that any part of it that you would like to change you can and that the easiest way to change the parts you don't like is not to push against them not to catalog them and pigeonhole them and join other groups who are also pushing against those things but to do your best bit by bit to focus more in the direction of wanted than in not wanted and here's why it's like everything that you've been living has brought you a perspective not just an opinion that is a perspective and everybody's got that but a point of attraction perspective is what we're talking about where you've lived life and you've observed it and then you've talked about it you've sort of calibrated to it you've isolated it by focusing on it and in many cases defended it and so you stand with a point of view but not just one that you see with your eyes or understand with your mind you have a vibrational point of view which you may not be completely aware of and that's really the point of everything that we talk about you've been living and responding that's mostly how you got your point of view a sort of knee-jerk reaction is what most people's point of view is about and so sometimes when you're noticing things that you don't like that you sort of don't like or really don't like you most humans develop a stance of pushing hard against that not realizing that when you do that it accentuates that point of view and makes that point of view more of what comes to you so your opinions or your point of view feel so valid to you and they are because your life keeps proving your focus point if you think that if you believe that the law of attraction keeps bringing you things like it not because it's what you want but because it's what you've been focused upon and it's what you're offering vibrationally an easier way to hear it is because you believe it an even stronger way to hear it is because you expect it Jerry used to say especially in the beginning he argued with us quite a bit about why would someone behave that way and we would say well that's not really your work well it felt like it was his work because it was in his atmosphere sometimes in his face and the point he argued the most often was I didn't really expect that person to behave that way until I observed their behavior and then I expected it and so his point he didn't get far with it because we're stubborn his point was it showed itself to me before I believed it and while that very often may be exactly what happened to you you're born into a family they had beliefs they behaved in a certain way they behaved toward you in a certain way and you developed a point of attraction about how you fit into that family or into that city or into the world in other words we get why you do it we just want you to remember that there is another way that you can be in this world you can observe it and choose from what you're observing and focus deliberately upon the parts that you are observing that you want to perpetuate in your experience and in the world at large you don't have to just be a regurgitator you are a creator you came to observe yes and to decide personally that matters your point of view matters you get to choose and once you have chosen to focus in the direction of what you are choosing rather than in its opposite why would anyone choose to focus in opposition to what they really are choosing well it's just a habit it's a habit for this reason you were born with these magnificent senses or abilities to perceive you see and hear and smell and taste and touch and 
what you don't realize maybe is that in what you see you are translating vibration into what you see what you hear you're translating vibration into what you hear your senses are helping you to translate meaningfully to yourself well that's compelling isn't it that reality that's compelling we get why you want to focus upon it much of it is delicious and all of it matters because how are you going to know what you do want unless you're able to taste a little bit or maybe a lot about what you don't want how would anyone decide what they prefer if it were not for the variety that helps you in that relative way that relativity way that comparison way how would you know what you choose and it matters what you choose because you are the creator of your own point of attraction so you live in a universe so do we you're physically focused we are non-physically focused we live in a universe that is vibrational first and foremost and then translatable into manifestation turning thoughts to things yay that's what you want that's what you get that's who you are that's why you're here so here we are all together as vibrational beings living in a vibrational universe and as you come to accept that and then you calibrate what you're doing vibrationally with what the larger part of you is doing vibrationally then you consciously activate your own guidance system and then it's so much easier to move in the direction of wanted when you're using your physical senses to choose from the plethora of ideas or experiences it's a lot to choose from and it can get very confusing but if you are using your guidance system to feel your way through it rather than try to think your way through it is so much easier and here very briefly is how that works you're much more than these physical bodies you in your physical bodies are extensions of something so much more your source energy and your physical body is an extension of that liquid love so as you made the decision to focus some of that source energy into this personality that you know as you all of you didn't come in fact most of you is not here in this body the larger part of your perspective remains non-physically focused while you are here having your important experiences but not without the awareness and the adoration and the appreciation of that larger part of you so every conversation you have your inner being is aware in on it everything you do everything you think you are an extension you can never separate yourself from that perspective and that perspective if you could just take that perspective and sit it in a chair in physical form that perspective of you would be your very best friend ever 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 and here's why that perspective of you knows you first of all aren't you always wanting somebody to get you knows you adores you roots for you knows the ever-changing life experiences that you're going to live and supports you in everything that you do knowing that you can't get it wrong and that you never get it done and so that non-physical part of you is having a vibrational response to whatever it is that you are about in any moment in time as are you and your emotions are your indicator of how close in understanding you are with your inner being about the very thing that you're focused on somebody is rude to you you don't like it if they're really a bully to someone you love or even to you you'd like to get bigger and stronger and you'd like to deal with them revenge is real the reason that you feel the discomfort that you might call fear or anger or revenge is because your inner being isn't looking at that bully in the way you are looking at that bully you say bully inner being says learner you say bully your inner being says someone here to play with you to help you find your balance 
You say, bully, bigger than me, taking advantage of me, your inner being says, that can never happen. It's only you giving away your power that ever negatively impacts you. And your inner being isn't even saying, and you shouldn't do that. Your inner being doesn't push against anything that you're about, just knows it, understands it, and is always focused upon who you really are and what you really want. Now, how does your inner being know what you want? Because every time you lived what you didn't want, you ask for what you did want, even if you didn't use your words. Someone's rude, you want a nicer world. You don't have enough to eat, you want more food. You want some more money to go do something, but you're aware of it because you feel some financial shortage. Your inner being does not join you in the financial shortage. Your inner being knows your prosperity, focuses upon your prosperity, holds such a clear thought of that prosperity. And because your inner being is non-physically focused where there is not resistance, when your inner being focuses upon something that you want and the law of attraction, which it does, responds, which it does to what your inner being is focused upon, which it is, which is about something that you want, which you've set into motion, there is a powerful attraction a gathering of cooperative components on your behalf to what you want question is what are you doing bully <laughs> complaining unfair and so it's only your perspective not in sync with your broader perspective that is the reason for negative emotion or is the reason for you pinching off the avalanche of well-being that is pointed at you and for you by you and by your inner being and by all that is by that which you often call God so what we want to talk about is how you more deliberately merge with who you are that blending that allowing step one is here you are in your physical body splat you got here a while ago you know what you don't want you know what you do want even if you're not speaking about it you're sending these continual streams of energy we've called them rockets of desire they shoot from you and they are gathered by the law of attraction into what is a vibrational reality it's a now reality from your inner beings point of view but you want to call it future because you don't want to call it now until it manifests but we want to tease you just a little bit that new car may not be in your garage yet so you want to call it future but your excitement about it is now isn't it or your discouragement about not having it is now you get to choose your inner being is focused upon its complete fulfillment and if you're not then you are causing discord you are pinching yourself off so that's how it works step one is contrast helps you to ask step two is the law of attraction and your inner being get all over what you've asked for go to work focusing and the law of attraction does its gathering of cooperative components and things are set into motion ah if you could see it if you could see it you'd feel better you'd feel more sure it might take away the surprise factor we don't want to give you a spoiler alert but there's good stuff waiting for you you just got to chill <laughs> step three is chill <laughs> step three is look for reasons to feel good and when you find one focus on it long enough that it gets some momentum you focus on the things you don't like long enough to give them momentum why not pick more of the things that you do want and focus upon them until the law of attraction gathers the momentum that takes your breath away really good